I am so excited about this live. We're about to go live with all four hosts of the Sisters Only Language Summit. And what's really exciting is that they're going to take time out of their super, super, super busy lives to answer questions that allies, that confused people, that the rest of us who aren't black women might have. And this is awesome because they don't have to do this. They definitely don't have to take the time to explain to us something that doesn't concern us, but they're going to. Uh, I'm just gonna be here moderating them. I'm gonna be asking a lot of the questions that you all might have, but we're gonna really just give them the platform to speak. So I'm gonna be joined on the live itself with Shahida, Tamara, and LaDonna. And then we're gonna have Desta in the chat with you all. She's gonna be answering questions, generally hyping us. Uh, and I cannot wait to get this started. So I'm about to bring, we're gonna see also how it works getting four people on that before. And that's also what's so exciting about this. Let's see. All right, Desta's in the chat. I think I, think I just said, yes, there she is. How are you? <laughs> I'm okay, how are you? I'm awesome. I'm super excited. I'm waiting for everybody else to request to join the live um, so I can let them in and then we can start. I see Desta's in the chat. She's languages through music. If anybody wants to interact with her, I think I saw LaDonna if she wants to ask to come <laughs> live with us. This is super, super exciting. All right, let's. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hi, hi, hi. This is awesome. All right, here we have. I'm going to turn this fan on because it's like kind of hot and they don't believe Perfect. in air conditioning here in Germany. So <laughs> I, I hope it doesn't bother you guys. I'm pad with. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. There we go. So How you doing, huh? Good. I'm going to have to hold this. <laughs> awesome. Cool. We have so many people in the chat right now. Um, I know we're still waiting on Tamara. I, we could start without her if y'all want. We could wait a second. I know Dustin's in the chat hanging out. Uh, whatever y'all want to do. Um, just bear with me. Just to make sure that you don't hear the fan, right? I have it on low. Okay, good. Right. I turned my fan down. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot, so. Awesome. So I'm going to keep an eye out for Tamara when she shows up, um, but we can start with the first question since a bunch of people just came in through the chat, which is just to start, let, let's, let's actually give everybody the tiniest little background. What is Soul? What is Sisters Only Language Summit? So we have a context. <laughs> okay, so Sisters Only Language Summit is really, it's that. It's a language summit for Black women and um, gender and non-conforming individuals who just want to sit around and talk about language in a safe space and just have fun twice a year and just have a good time. Cool. So I'm not racist. I'm an ally, so I can come, right? Um, well, <laughs> the way it works is we're creating a safe space. And so in creating a safe space, we wanted to we don't want to feel like um censored because a lot of times even though we have allies in the room sometimes we don't feel censored we don't feel free to like express ourselves our concerns problems that we may have we have to be considerate we feel like we have to be considerate of allies so we really want to have a space where we can say what needs to be said get whatever advice we need to get ask whatever questions we need to ask without feeling like we have to watch out for other people's feelings. So we're hoping that the allies can understand that. <laughs> okay. So if I'm, that was really nicely said, but like I said, like I'm not racist, even though I'm white. Is that, is this reverse racism? Is me being excluded anti me somehow? No. So the short answer is no. <laughs> the slightly longer but still short answer is no because one, reverse racism is not a thing. And two, it's really not about um, trying to put anyone down or prevent anyone from accessing information or having opportunities. It's really the opposite of that. 
and creating opportunities and conversation and like an enjoyable safe space for us um to just essentially we're still talking about languages i promise it's not a secret society um <laughs> we're just talking about languages with people who can relate to things outside of languages okay cool so it's not about me at all it's actually about you that makes sense exactly. <laughs> yeah Awesome. We have camera coming up in the chat right now. Honey, if you want to just request to be in the video, I'll let you in. Um, cool. So then why do you need this event? Why is that important? Well, it's really important because we got together to discuss it. I, I created kind of like a similar space called Black Girls Learn Languages, where it was for Black women because, you know, as you know, as a language learner, there's sometimes a lot of isolation in learning languages, even though you're trying to connect with other people, depending on the language you learn, if there's not a lot of people learning it, there could be a little isolation there. And even more so with Black women, because a lot of people don't see us as a language learning. We don't come to mind for some reason as a demographic. So I started that. And then also when we got together and they were like, hey, we should do this event. What do you think? Um, I was thinking that would be great because, again, in language learning, there's a lot of isolation. And then even when you go to events, sometimes you like the only black person there and people are you can sense the awkwardness like they're not sure how to connect with you and you're just a human like you're just a person just talk to me like you would talk to the other person over there so we started this because we wanted to have that okay i want to go to a language event i want to celebrate language but i want to be and I feel like that uh what do you call them kind of like this sometimes you feel unwelcome or sometimes it's just awkward and you don't want to so that's why we got together and decided to do it. And in the chat, we have Desta right now plugging Black Girls Learning Languages on Facebook. Nahida, do you want to just tell us really quickly an aside about what that other project is that's related to Souls but a little bit different? Yeah, so Black Girls Learn Languages is actually a community. We have a private group. And, and basically, a lot of the women in the group go to Souls. Not all of them are in the group, but a lot of them do go to Souls. Event. Um, but basically, it's just in the in the group. There's a lot of resources being shared, a lot of musings about, hey, you know, this happened to me. Um, but you guys think this thing happened to you too, as a black person learning X language. So that's basically what that community is. And not very active on Twitter, but the Instagram and the Twitter also connect into that. Cool. And I know that a lot of what you're saying right now, like I psychology is really important to me i'm a person with mental illness and a lot of what you're talking about right now this need for a space where you don't feel like you have to cater to others where you can be more relaxed to me that sounds like a trauma response is something about being a black woman traumatic where you would need this space I know we talked about the camera potentially answering this, but she just got on, so I'm hoping the, the AV is all good with her. <laughs> cool. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, um, Marissa, I'm glad you brought up this sort of, you know, being a person with mental illness and trauma, because I do think part of what people don't realize is that when we sort of exist in spaces that we just aren't seeing, that representation actually does matter, right? I mean, for years in the U.S., like, all of our presidents looked exactly the same, right? And then we had this sort of one guy who looked a little bit browner, and all of a sudden, people are like, well, why does that even matter? Like, why does the color of his skin matter? And then now we have a vice president who's a woman of color, and people are like, well, why does that matter? What about her politics? But the fact of the matter is, growing up in this country as a young Black woman, or as a girl, <laughs> now a woman, I never thought that was possible because I did not see myself in that position. So representation matters just to be able to see the people who look like you. And we realize that that's not substantive, right? Like, yes, there are things we share in our experience and everything's not just about how you look because there are people who may look like you who think completely different than me. So it's not just about that. But it is about being able to see ourselves in those spaces um, and following our passion. And 
people who may not have this experience might not know it, but if you're not a part of a group that is a quote-unquote minority, then you've never had to experience a place where you felt like you had to code switch or you had to hide a part of who you are or that who you are isn't welcome. All of those things can be really traumatic when just being you is not okay in the spaces that we inhabit every single day in our lives, not just with language learning. Um, even for me, like I always tell a story um, in my community, we, we're learning Spanish, and I talk about, like, there was no curriculum that talked about, like, my hair. Like, I have just a lot, right, with people, like, what the hell is that, right? Um, but the the words for hair were, like, rubia, lashes, like, blonde, straight. There were no words for, like, trenzas, to say braids, rastas. That's not in any curriculum, right? And it's something very basic to us for, like, how to describe ourselves, which is something in language that we all are taught to do, right? You have to be able to describe who you are, where you're from. And I couldn't do that with that curriculum. So just pointing that out to say that when we don't see ourselves, there are things that are missed and not even thought about, even though they're very basic to us and who we are. And it is traumatic to constantly, every single day, feel like who you are is not okay and you have to fight. Like, we always are on this, like, mode of, like, I have to fight something. So I was really glad to connect with Tahita and and Desta and Lazana on this because we really, as we talk amongst ourselves, we realize, oh, my gosh, we need this. People are asking for this. We don't feel safe. Um, and it's not in this, I mean, I've, I know there's a lot of things going on in the world, and let's be real, there are a lot more traumatic things happening. You know, there are people who are going through a lot of, of struggles. So, you know, people might look at this like, okay, so what? You don't see other black women when you go to a language event, which you will. But for those of us who have a passion for language learning, having that space where we feel safe to express how we feel, feel safe to express, like, our frustrations, our joys, our, our love of this language that, you know, let's be real, a lot of our, our peers, friends and family have no idea. They're not like, oh, yeah, let's conjugate verbs today. Like, that is just weird to them. So having that space we can connect positively and not feel like we have to be burdened by all the stuff that just comes with being in spaces where we are not the norm or the standard, quote, unquote, it's just, it was hugely important, and we didn't even realize how important it was until we started having the event and the feedback that we just got. And I mean, people just love them from soul. Just like, oh my gosh, like this was like the greatest thing, especially during quarantine. But just the fact that we got to connect and talk about stuff like this and all the languages that we're learning that just don't come up in other spaces. So I do think it's important to have that space where we don't feel like we have to censor ourselves. Um, because there are other people, quote unquote, that might judge us for who we are. Yeah, and it's interesting because Shahida just mentioned about how other spaces might feel uncomfortable for a Black woman learning languages. Tamara, can you go into a little bit more the positive stuff, what like a space like souls can bring to a person who's in this position? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, like I said, at first it was just the four of us kind of chatting and we had all connected and then it's like, oh, we should have an event. And I know Shahida has a vision. We're still going to do this. We're going to have an in-person event. That's what we originally wanted to do. But then COVID, right? So we've all been sort of living in this online space. But it's just been so great to connect with other people and to see the connections that other people are making. Um, that, oh, you're also learning French. Oh, you also are going to West Africa. Or, oh, you've been to Korea. Um, you, you're learning an Asian language. Like, and what's the difference culturally with that? Um, we've done sign language. Uh, which was a really big thing for us to make the event accessible. Um, we had a presentation at our last event on Black American Sign Language, which I didn't even know was a thing. I just thought it was ASL. Everyone learns sign languages. I learned the alphabet when I was in elementary school. I thought that was cool, but apparently no. Oh. Back where we left off, I think. Um, okay. oh. So everything just everything just crashed for a second. I'm sorry, everything just crashed for a second. Do you want to pick it up back up at the last thing I heard? And so I'm not sure what the audience heard. Last thing I heard was Black American Sign Language, something like that. Could you pick that up again yes. from there? Thanks. So we had a presentation on Black American Sign Language, which I would say I didn't even know was a thing um, because I just thought it was ASL, American Sign Language. Like, it's just, okay. I know about British Sign Language, but I didn't know there was a Black American sign language um and there's a history to that right like just like there was one point in this country where it was illegal for black people to learn how to read which frederick Douglass talked a lot about it was also a place where black people who were hard of hearing were not taught sign language 
because you can imagine being in a group that's disadvantaged within a group that has a disability. It's just so many layers. So um, we had a really powerful presentation on that at our last event. Um, we've done presentations on African languages. So we thought that was important to sort of highlight um, instead of just sort of the, you know, standard like Spanish, English, French that people are learning. So it's just been great to learn from me about other things going on and also to see other black women connect over the different languages and cultures that they're in because there's so many of us and it does feel really lonely when you feel like we're the only ones. And we've all learned through this that we're not the only ones and it's been great. Awesome. So, and also I will say, this is, I know I mentioned, I started the live with this, I think before the rest of you came on, this is amazing that you all are taking the time out of your hectic professional lives and personal lives and language learning time to hang out and chat with us. Uh, so I, for one, mega appreciate it. Um, but as we're starting to wrap it up, one of the big questions that I wanted to ask was how the rest of us can support souls. I mean, we started out with me being like, can I come? Okay, cool. Not the right space for me. Well, how can everybody else who's not a black woman support souls? What ideas do we have? What things can we materially do if we have a budget, if we have no budget? What can we, how can we help? So I would say there's three main ways to help. So if you do have a little bit of a budget, um, you can sponsor a student, call them students, um, sponsor a ticket for someone who may want to attend um, but can't for whatever reason i mean COVID is still kicking everybody's butt right now so like we get it um and that's another reason why we try to keep the prices affordable because we really do want people to just be able to come and have a good time and not worry about that um if you can't sponsor a ticket right now please share you know let everyone know maybe you have some people that follow you friends family who would be interested um and also if you do have uh, more of a platform and maybe you're running events uh, language events please reach out to black women to speak at your events because we're here we have the qualifications we're interested and you know that's really one of the core things it's not just okay let's have fun for a day it's these are people who have these wonderful language learning abilities they have these businesses like everything and they're just not readily visible within the community so not only are we having a space for us we're putting a spotlight on these just talented black women and so now you can't say you don't know you can't say you can't find anyone. You can't say you don't know where these people are. Like, we're we're trying to put people on, <laughs> you know? Like, there needs to be more of this. And in that same vein, if you're going to um, invite these people to speak at your events, make sure that it's a comfortable place for them to be because that's the part that everybody kind of messes up on a little. Um, it's not enough just to invite I mean, it helps a lot, but it's not enough just to invite. You also have to make sure that your event is comfortable and welcome for Black women to speak at as well. Um, and even outside of running events, like if, if you don't run a language event, but maybe you run some other type of event or you have a Facebook group or anything that you want to invite people to, just be cognizant of how that space is run. And if you're going to invite someone, um, if you're going to invite a Black woman into that space to share her expertise, make sure you're supporting her and backing her up when she comes into that space. Like, that is very, very important. And I'm just going to ask a follow-up question about that. So is there a list of all of the speakers y'all have had at the various summits? Because I think you're a number five now. Is that is this the fifth one coming up or the fourth? Four. We're at four. Okay. Cool. So you're so, number four. Yeah. Um, we do have a agenda for the current speakers, but a list of past speakers is actually a really good idea. Um, so maybe I'll, I will take on that project and kind of like have a sub, uh, page and just have like past speakers, their contact information. So you can reach out to them. And a lot of the people that speak, um, they do other things too, like they're translators, interpreters, writers, um, 
they teach their languages like they do so many things so yeah and I'll also mention that on the Souls Instagram, just to stop us from putting any more work on your plate, on the Souls Instagram, if anybody scrolls down, you can often see all of the speakers that have been there, and that's a good starting place if this list doesn't end up getting built. Um, but Tamara, are you going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, we also do have um, all the recordings um, from previous events that we do make available um, when you register for the current event. So we do have that option that um, is available, and we are working to make all that accessible too. And just kind of our vision for the future, besides when to do an in-person event, um, we also worked on translating um, what we have from previous events into other languages so it can be more of like an immersion experience. So if you're learning French, if you're learning Spanish, if you're learning German, that we make those presentations available in those languages as well. But that's part of our vision for the future. But right now, when you register, you will be able to have an option to um, get access to those previous um, speaker presentations as well because we've had some awesome speakers so it's just we and we and we're just looking to continue to build that and keep our sort of uh database so to speak of black women doing awesome things in languages is growing so yeah awesome. and clarifying question about that will obviously those things are available as you register that's awesome for current participants will those are those talks available to the rest of us in any way or is that something you're also keeping exclusive to black women That's a good question. I don't think we really discussed that. <laughs> well, I can't wait to find out. <laughs> yeah. If somebody sees this live in the future, you can always drop them a note. Yeah, I think the integrity of the safe space, we probably, I don't think it would be, you know, because a lot of things are said in confidence. Yeah. And, you know, I think to keep with the integrity of that, probably I don't think we would be making it. Cool, cool, cool. I just wanted to clarify. Awesome. <laughs> so... I would love any parting, if y'all want to take a second to anything you want to leave anybody with, any final words of wisdom, piece of advice, things you're frustrated with, uh, I think this would be a perfect time for, for final thoughts. Mm, I just, I guess I would just say, like, promise we're not the Illuminati. Like, there's no, <laughs> like, <laughs> secret ceremonies going on. Like, we're just talking about languages in the context of like being a black woman and sometimes how that affects our language learning journey and experience um so us being there does not prevent us from being at your events too so you should invite and reach out to black women because we're awesome yeah and i and i would say just like you know if you go to a college campus and there's a frat house where people who aren't necessarily in the frat don't come in and like women aren't necessarily allowed or, or things like that you know there's some of that that may seem like oh my gosh why well, can't anyone come in but it's also kind of understood that this is a group for people who are in this group right like it, and it's not really controversial and other in other settings just like if i was at thanksgiving dinner for my family and you were to show up we'd be like well what I mean, we're, we we love you, but, like, you're not in our fit, you know, so it's not, I don't want anyone ever take offense, like, is what I'm trying to say. It's not really, it wasn't controversial to us, so we were a little bit surprised, by honestly, when we first started getting this feedback, because it's all done out of love, it's done out of support for each other, it's, it's a joyous space, and it's not meant to exclude anyone, so just, just kind of understand it's sort of just like a normal, natural thing for us to do and to support each other, and it's no offense to anyone else. Do you have anything you want to add, or are you feeling good? I mean, they've said it all. It's like, <laughs> I'm actually, I was actually floored myself when we were going through, like, some of the feedback and the correspondence we were getting. I was just like, what? What's going on? I mean, it was really, and it was, it was a little, it was a little, uh, I don't know what the word is, but it was a little disconcerting I guess I could say I was really surprised so um, I really hope that this helps get, give some clarity so that people will you know understand this is not about anyone but black women this isn't about any other group we just want to celebrate ourselves and like she said Thanksgiving was a great example sometimes you have family events and it doesn't mean like hey you're not my friend anymore it's just a only event and you know, we have other events, we have other things going on where we all can do things together, but this specific wedding or whatever is limited to this group. 
Awesome. Well, thank you all for hanging out. I know Jessica was also mentioning in the chat that I'm going to be posting a list that we came up with of additional resources if somebody's still confused. I know we have plenty of Black women in attendance who might want additional speaking points. It's definitely not on Black women to educate the rest of us and be experts on racism and why this stuff happens and why they need this space. That, like, we can also do that. And there's plenty of amazing books and podcasts and lectures that are readily available online. Um, so once I post this, I'll put them in the description and likely my story or my grid. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'm sure we can add them to the chat once I post this to the grid. So thank you all, ladies. This was such a pleasure and absolute honor that you trusted me with this. Thanks to Desta in the chat.